This lesson is Lesson 5-9 for FST, and the title of the lesson is Secant, Cosecant, and Cotangent. These are three additional trig functions that are also contained on most ACT tests. Most of the students that I work with have already learned formulas or ratios for three trig functions called sine, cosine, and tangent. These are the more popular of the trig functions, and most kids learn an acronym called SOCOTOA to help them remember the different ratios that go with sine, cosine, and tangent. The SO part of SOCOTOA refers to sine of an angle being calculated as the opposite leg of a right triangle divided by the hypotenuse side of a right triangle. For cosine of an angle, the ka part of Sokotoa refers to the adjacent side or the adjacent leg in a right triangle over the hypotenuse side. And the toa portion of Sokotoa refers to the tangent of an angle being equal to the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. When you work with secant, cosecant, and cotangent, you're going to take those same ratios and you're going to use them as reciprocals. So for secant, you'll abbreviate it as SEC of an angle, and you'll simply do the reciprocal of the cosine function. Or if you're working with the right triangle, you can do hypotenuse over the adjacent side. Similarly, for cosecant, you abbreviate it as CSC of an angle, and that represents the reciprocal of sine. Or if you're working with a right triangle, you can do the hypotenuse over the opposite. And finally, for cotangent, you abbreviate that as COT of an angle, and that is the reciprocal of tangent. Remember that tangent is normally sine over cosine. So when you're doing the reciprocal of tangent, you could simply flip that over and say cosine over sine. Or if you're working with a right triangle, you can say adjacent over opposite. So let's put these into practice so you can see how they work in particular problems. So I have four examples that we're going to talk through. The first example is cotangent of 180. Because cotangent refers back to cosine over sine, we're going to calculate the cosine of 180 over the sine of 180. All of the students that I work with have been encouraged to memorize all of the values on the unit circle, but just for a point of reference, I'll quickly make a sketch of the unit circle. Normally, 0 degrees is here at what we would call 3 o'clock, and if you go to 180 degrees, you'd be over here, and the coordinate at that location is the coordinate negative 1, 0. The cosine is the x value and the sine is the y value. So if we're taking those two values and making them into a fraction, we would say negative 1 over 0. Since you can't divide by 0, you would say that that value is undefined. So sometimes when you're working with a cotangent, you'll get a 0 on the bottom and therefore you would get an answer of undefined. That does happen occasionally. Let's try secant. Remember that secant is the reciprocal of a cosine function. So we're going to do 1 over the cosine of 60 degrees. So again, using your unit circle, if you go to 60 degrees, my students should have memorized that the cosine at that value is a half. So if you're thinking about doing a division of 1 divided by a half, that is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So you'd say 1 times 2 over 1. So the value that we get there is a 2. For cosecant, remember that that is the reciprocal of sine. So we're going to do 1 over the sine of 45. Again, using the unit circle, we're here at 45 degrees. We know that the sine is the square root of 2 over 2. Again, if you're doing division, it's much easier to change that to multiplication and say 1 times 2 over the square root of 2. The only problem with this particular value is that you cannot leave a square root on the bottom of a fraction. So if there is a square root there to get rid of it, you multiply by it on the top and the bottom. When you multiply across here, 
The square root of 2 times itself simply becomes a 2. And on the top, the 2 and the square root of 2 sit next to each other. When you have 2 divided by 2 here, those will cancel out. So our final answer there is just the square root of 2. And our final problem that we're going to do is the secant of 7 pi over 6. If you're working with a problem that has a value that's in radians as opposed to degrees like we have on the previous questions, you'll need to either know where that's located or convert it to degrees as necessary. To convert a radian measure to degrees, you multiply by 180 over pi. In that case, the pi's will cancel. We could also do some reducing before we multiply straight across. 6 goes into 18. 6 goes into itself one time, and 6 goes into 18 three times, and then we keep the 0 there. So that makes it so that the bottom just becomes a 1, and on the top we just do 7 times 3, which is 21, with the 0. So we get 210 degrees. So if you look at your unit circle, 210 degrees is right here. Again, when we're doing the secant, we're talking about the reciprocal of the cosine. So we're really trying to calculate 1 over the cosine of 210 degrees. So at that location, the cosine value there is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. So again, here we want to do 1 divided by the square root of 3 over 2, and it is negative. When we change that to multiplication, we'll get 1 times negative 2 over the square root of 3. And just like on the previous question, we have to eliminate the radical or the square root. To get rid of it, we multiply by the radical 3 on the top and the bottom. On the bottom, a radical times itself cancels the radical, so we get 3. And on the top, the 2 and the 3 just sit next to each other. And that value should be negative as well. There is no canceling out to do here because the radical of the 3 doesn't go with the radical of the number on the bottom. So if the radical weren't there on the top, we could cancel those but the radical makes it so that we can't reduce. So we've gone as far as we can on that problem. Finally, I would like to look at a problem related to the graphing of these functions, and that relates to one of the homework questions that our students have in this lesson. It looks at uh, question number three, where they're asked to graph cosine and then the secant. I've already graphed these in advance, so we'll just take a look at the results. Here's a graph of the cosine function. That looks like what we would expect it to. It's a wave, and when you work with the secant, because they are reciprocals of each other, you can see that at the top of each of these mountains and at the bottom of each of these valleys, you get what look like parabolas, so that when you put them together, you can kind of see here that the cosine graph is normally there, and your new secant graph just mimics those arcs at the top of the mountain and at the bottom of the valley in each case. The only other thing that you want to make sure that you note when you're doing these types of graphs is that there are asymptotes wherever the cosine graph crosses the x-axis. So if you think about an x-axis or an x-intercept, the value there will be 0, and so when you do the reciprocal of that, you'll be dividing by 0. So wherever the x-intercepts occur for cosine, you will have asymptotes on the secant graph. So when you're making your graph, you want to make sure to note that and include those on your picture.